Welcome back to Keep It Quick. Today we'll be going over data structures and their properties. A global variable can be accessed by any procedure or function as it's outside of any. Meanwhile, a local variable can only be accessed by the function or procedure it's inside of. A procedure is a named block of code. It can have zero or many parameters passed into it as an input, and it performs a specific task. It needs to be called in order for the code to run. Now, a function is very similar to this. Hi, this is uh, Jack from the future. Uh, I've been politely informed that the main difference between a function and a procedure is that a function returns a value. And that's a really important word, value. Not an output, returns a value. In fact, it's so important, I'm just going to add some red circles to that word. Ah, I'll also add a red arrow. Should, yeah, you know what, I'll even underline it. There you go. That's how important it is. An array is a data structure with one data type, stored categorically with one identifier, and starts at zero. In c -sharp, we can create an array by stating a data type, then bracket, then giving it an ident identifier. We can then set the amount of elements we want in that array by doing new data type brackets and a number of how many we want to store. Take the example below. Here we have an array called names, and it can store four names. And I've assigned the name index 0 to Bill. So when we do console write line name 0, we'll get the string Bill. In our next example, we have four elements in an array. We can display all of these elements by using an iteration in a loop. Stack uses a last in first out data structure and has three main methods. Push adds an element to its array. Pop removes the top one and peak views the one on top of the pile. It's important to know that you cannot remove or look at any other than the top, and you cannot add any more than the top. Think of it like a stack of books, or building blocks. On the .NET frame, Microsoft has already implemented it. However, the OCR exam board does require that you know how to implement it with code, as it's often a question in the exam. We'll be going over how to implement it into code. We start off with two global variables. One will be our array, and our other will be the pointer. Next is our main procedure. We give the array any kind of number. In the example below, I've given it 5. Next, we assign the pointer a value of 0. In our push procedure, we do an if statement. If the pointer plus 1 is equal to the array's length, it will point out an error saying stack is full. This is to prevent it from adding any elements while the stack is full. Otherwise, it will add it to the list, and make the pointer go up by 1. Next is our function pop. If a pointer is equal to minus 1, it will state that the stack is empty, and return nothing. Otherwise, it will go to where the pointer is at in the array, and take one off. This will remove the element at the top of the stack. For our next function, peak, it simply returns the element that the pointer is pointing at in the array. Next is a record structure. A record structure allows multiple items to be stored under one identifier, and the items can have multiple different data types. Our next data structure is a queue, which uses a first in and first out data structure. You can only remove items from the front of the array and only add items from the back of the array, using its three main methods, in queue, DQ, and peak. Similar to stacks, with the OCR exam board, you also have to know how to implement this into code as it's also often a question in the exam. We start off by stating our global variables. We still have an array, but we also have two pointers, a front and back one. We then in our main function state the quantities of our variables. In the example below, I've set the array to 5, the front to 0, and the back to 0. In our onQ procedure, we increment our back pointer by 1. To error check, if the back is equal to the front pointer, it will print out that the queue is full. Otherwise, it will add the item to the queue. Next is our DQ function. If the front is equal to the back, then it will print that the queue is empty, and it will return nothing. Otherwise, it will go to the front pointer in the array, and take one off the back one. This will remove the element from the queue. That's all for Keep It Quick. As always, for more information, go to www.learncomputing.org for more information.